NASA wants to use it to land American astronauts on the moon. The Pentagon wants to use it to whisk military cargo around the world in minutes. Astronomers, satellite companies, and aspiring space tourists are eyeing its potential to drastically slash the cost of getting to space. Elon Musk says, it is the holy grail of space technology and sees it as crucial to his ultimate goal of colonizing Mars. It is called Starship, and for SpaceX, Mr. Musk's private space company, it is the future. Its success or failure may determine whether the company achieves its dreams. More importantly, as the SpaceX Starship Super Heavy rocket ship in preparation for its next orbital flight attempt, scientists just revealed the great potential of Starship that is unlike any others before. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, Let's jump straight into today's episode. SpaceX's Starship exploded six months ago, but this is not a big deal. Yeah, to hear the folks in charge tell it, you'd think that SpaceX's Starship rocket, the biggest, grandest, most powerful rocket ever built, didn't blow up over the Gulf of Mexico in April. The company didn't call the incident an explosion. Starship instead experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly, SpaceX tweeted. That's why we test. You know, says Lisa Watson Morgan, NASA's program manager for the Artemis Lunar Landing System. You learn more from a test that doesn't go well than from one that does go well, and then you regroup and go again. Ship 24 and Booster 7 did not do nearly as badly in their mission. The Soviet N-1 erupted just seconds after liftoff, collapsing back to the ground and destroying the launch pad. SpaceX, meanwhile, never promised that Starship would succeed, but it did set clearing the launch tower and keeping the pad intact as one of the main goals of the mission. Starship has cleared the pad and beach. Vehicle is on a nominal flight path, the company tweeted in the first moments of the flight, officially marking the achievement of the modest goal it set for itself. I think the explosion was something that SpaceX anticipated as a realistic possibility, says John Logsdon, Professor Emeritus and founder of the George Washington University Space Policy Institute. They did a very good job of lowering expectations prior to the launch. And I think it's because they realized that testing a complex system like this, there are multiple things that can go wrong. And something did. More still could. The company is continuing to build starships at a furious pace reminiscent of NASA's Apollo era when 13 Saturn V were flown from 1967 to 1973, nine of which carried crews to the moon in just a four-year window. I think they have a factory full of multiple duplicates of these systems, says Logsdon. It's not like they lost something that's irreplaceable. So far, Starship is still on the ground to wait for the FAA license, but the company has staked its future and NASA has staked its Artemis moon program on the promise that the mammoth rocket will indeed fly and fly well. Rockets explode and rockets soar. As these rockets launch in the future, Musk plans to implement frequent Starship sorties from both South Texas and from SpaceX's leased launch pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where Crew Dragon launches already happen. Then we may need to go to uh, an ocean-based like platform. Just if, if, if you're launching, I don't know, 10 times a day, uh, that might be a bit much for even for, even for the Cape. I don't know. But uh, we, so we may end up doing uh, platform-based launches from, from, uh, from a specially designed sort of ocean-going platform. But we, we, we will need to do a lot of launches. So we're talking about thousands of launches per year. Musk said the incredible launch rate would be necessary to send over 100,000 tons of cargo per year to orbit, which he said is still not quite enough for his dreams of Mars exploration that would require roughly a million tons per year. For perspective, the workhorse Falcon 9 rocket sends about 1,500 to 16 tons to orbit per year, which Musk said is roughly 80% of Earth's annual launching mass to orbit. He hopes to boost that to 2,000 tons next year. Either we do that or we're a single planet species forever, Musk said. We achieve those kinds of numbers or we will never have a self-sustaining city on Mars. 
world-renowned physicist Dr. Michio Kaku agrees with Musk's opinion. As an insurance policy, we have to make sure that, that humans become a two-planet species. These are the words of Carl Sagan. And now, of course, Elon Musk has revived this vision by talking about a multi-planet species. Even Neil deGrasse Tyson, who calls himself one of SpaceX's biggest critics, also believes that Musk's SpaceX orbit project has more merit and has a higher chance of going beyond suborbital flight. The concept of SpaceX, he want to send people to places. It is an effort to push that limit, that frontier of exploring space. SpaceX could fly bigger and heavier instruments more often and much more cheaply if SpaceX's projections of $10 per kilogram cargo launch costs are to be believed. On Mars, they could deploy rovers not as one-offs, but in herds. Space telescopes could grow, and fleets of satellites in low Earth orbit could become commonplace. Astronomy, planetary science, and Earth observation could all boldly go better than they ever have before. One mission being considered by Jennifer Heldman, a scientist at NASA Ames, is a sample return from the moon. A starship would land on the moon, fill its hold with lunar ice that would be kept chilled, and then return it to Earth for scientists to study. Researchers could discover much about how the ice was deposited over billions of years and where it is abundant and available for a future lunar base. Daniel Baker, director of the Laboratory for Atmospheric and Space Physics at the University of Colorado Boulder, suggests that Starship could carry a probe to Mercury, a tough planet to reach because of the need for extra fuel and shielding against the Sun. Starship could also send a massive probe into interstellar space, perhaps passing by some of the outer planets along the way like the Voyager probes did. The massive rocket could also launch space-based telescopes that would dwarf both the Hubble and the James Webb. The Starship could also launch a series of landers directed toward some of the more interesting moons of the outer planets. For example, NASA has been studying a Europa lander as a follow-up to the Europa Clipper. Europa, a moon of Jupiter, is thought to have a subsurface ocean covered by a layer of ice that might be warm enough to contain extraterrestrial life. Saturn's moons, Titan and Enceladus, are also possible targets for landers. Enceladus is an ice-covered world similar to Europa. Titan is a weird world with liquid methane seas. NASA is studying a mission that would put a submarine into one of those seas, the Kraken Mare. SpaceX has already proven the virtues of reusable rockets with the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, which have taken the lion's share of the launch market. The Starship will follow the principle that reusability plus quick turnaround leads to cheap access to space and therefore more space missions, but on a much larger scale. Thus, once Starship becomes operational, it will help to fulfill the promise of the space age that has been over a century in the making. And that just wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high-quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.